I think it's recording, Adrian. Hi. Adrian, wave to everybody. Hi, everybody. My name is Dallas Graham. I'm the executive director of the Red Fred Project, um, which some of you may or may not have heard of. Um, we're really happy to be participating in the Utah Humanities Book Festival this year, uh, virtually, right? We've, we've been luckily invited back every year um usually to the big mouse stage over at library square but of course because of the circumstances we are we've been invited to join here virtually so uh we're taking a, a really gladdening smile approach to this because we get a little bit more time to talk about the project as well as talk with some of our storytellers yeah so um before we jump into that um, and I have one of our Utah storytellers, Adrian Paz, with me. That's what we're. That's who we're going to be talking with for the next little bit. He's one of our published authors, and um, we're going to get all into it and what he thought and what about his book and the, the process for him. Um, but before we jump into to that further, I want to give you a broader idea of what the Red Fred Project is and why um, we're doing what we're doing. So. I'm going to jump into one of the books. Each of our books has the mission of the Red Fred Project on one of the very first pages. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read from that so that you guys understand what the Red Fred Project is. <clears throat> the Red Fred Project finds children living in extraordinary circumstances and asks them the question, if you could write a book for the entire world to read, what would it be about? The stories they share are filled with humor, compassion, and wisdom. The books we create together become a vehicle for these stories. They become a lasting voice, a tangible achievement for each child. As part of the proceeds from each book sold goes to the family or to a related cause chosen by the child, the books are also a way to help with financial difficulties. You see, the magic multiplies, lives on forever. You will be inspired by the talent and imagination of these children. That would be in long form what our mission is. And we are entering our seventh year. Next month, we'll begin, begin the seventh year of our project. Um, the Red Fred Project started with the mission of 50 children, 50 books in 50 different states across America. We've actually gone to 17 so far, and we're still doing that. And then a little while ago, I had this other idea to start a local collection in Utah because we started our Red Fred project in Utah with Nathan Glad. And then I thought we should try to find more kids in Utah, but I can't do it by myself. I need help. So we opened up a call and we asked for professional writers, designers, photographers, videographers, and fundraisers. And then we put those peoples on teams. And then we call up our dear friends, Angels, Angels Hands Foundation, which is an incredible organization in the state of Utah that um, acts as like a hub for families who have children who have extraordinary circumstances. And they help create events for these families and ways to get together. And we just love the Angels Hands Foundation. Angels Hands Foundation did a quick search and they were like, hey, some of our kids would like to become published authors. Now, one of those kids was Adrian Paz. Right, Adrian? Yep. You're part of Angel Sands Foundation too as well, right? I am. Yeah. So we um, found a team and um, got them connected with Adrian, and then we started making a book. And now I'm going to jump to um, the portion where we get to know Adrian a little bit, right? Uh, but Adrian was one of our um, one of our storytellers. That's what we call all of our authors, our child authors, is our storytellers. And he, I think, pretty quickly had an idea of what he was going to do, huh, Adrian? Yep. Okay, Adrian, tell us a little bit before we jump into some questions. Tell us a little bit about you. Um, what number one? What's it been like this morning for you? Usually the mornings are like I wake up, get ready for the, the online school stuff. Mm -hmm. But on weekends, I usually sleep, sleep in. 
<laughs> oh, when you sleep in, how late is sleeping in? I really, I really don't know. I sometimes lose track of time. <laughs> We're talking like nine or ten, maybe? maybe around that time. I love it. I love it. Um, well, I've, you know, I had a really good time working with you as well on this project. So if you wouldn't mind, can we just jump into some of the questions I prepared for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, how old are you? I'm 11 years old. 11? When did you turn 11? I turned 11 on June 17th. Okay. How's 11 been? It's been pretty good. It's been a COVID-11, huh? Yeah, it was actually pretty fun. I went to South Dakota for my birthday. Oh, why South Dakota? Because we, cause we never been there before. What did you think about it? It was fun. I saw Mount Rushmore. Ah, Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse? It was fun. Um, uh, were they... Were they as magnificent as you thought they were going to be? Were they not as magnificent as you they, thought? They were actually really good. Yeah? Yeah, they were really cool. Would you recommend um, people go see them? Yeah. Okay. Especially Crazy Horse. And, but it's not done yet. They're still like working on, on him. Why do you say especially Crazy Horse? Because it's, it's like really big. It's going to be really big. That is so great. You know, I have not been to South Dakota. I've been all over. There's a couple of states that I haven't been to yet. So I'm going to be driving across the country again. And I think this time when I go this way, I'm going to go up through South Dakota. I'll take a picture and send it to you. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, Adrian, why did you, why did you want to work with the Red Fred project? Can you tell me why? Because it would, because I thought it would be fun just to get to publish a book, right? One. Yeah. Are you a reader? Would you consider yourself a reader? Uh, kind of. Like it not, not that. <laughs> but you still wanted to write. You still wanted to make a book, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. Um. Uh. What do you What do you like to read? If If you're reading. I usually read like dinosaur educational books. Like those okay. are the usual kind of, and I have what, and I love reading comics. <gasps> okay, what comics? What are your favorite comic characters? Captain Underpants is one of them. <laughs> hey. They're pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. And then, hmm, what are some of the others? Um, do you like Marvel? Do you like any of the Marvel characters? Yes. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. All what? The whole team? <laughs> All Guardians of the Galaxy characters. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Star Lord and Groot. Yes. Especially Star Lord and Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket's, yeah, Rocket's crazy great. I love Rocket too. Um, what about DC? Do you like uh, any Batman? If you, who would it be Batman or Superman if you had to pick one? I think it would be Superman. Okay. Just like his okay. vision or what? What's your favorite thing about Superman? I think he's just better than Batman because Batman's just a, like a shady character. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it. He's He's got some trauma, huh? He's had some serious trauma in his life. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Serious. Um, that's really fun to, to know. I actually love comics, too. I still read them. I still read them. Okay. I love them. Yeah. I'm a big comic yeah. fan. I always, I always write my own comic books. I always make my own kind of comic books. Really? I don't know if I knew that. Not, not like actual books. I just, like, grab a notepad and write books. Just like, yeah, and I have a bunch of but I have a bunch of comics That's that I've written. This needs to be a further discussion between you and me. <laughs> off, the, <laughs> off the video. That's really great. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned your interest in dinosaurs, obviously, yeah. with show your title of your book real quick. The Dino Hunt. The Dino Hunt. Why do you think what what got you into why did you get interested in dinosaurs, bud? I don't know. I think it started when I was really little. 
like I got introduced to my first dinosaur thing met and then since then I just love them you just love them everything about them yeah like I remember when we were getting to know you and having some of our initial meetings I was really and I'm not just saying I was really impressed by how much you knew how well you said their names <laughs> uh your drawings I which we did actually put some of your drawings in your book, right? We actually yeah. put some of them in your book. Um, so so you, you're just a collector of these, of this kind of book? Like you like any sort of dinosaur books and reading? Yeah, yeah even this, well, now when it's like a little kid book. Right. Other than that, I love dino, any dino book. Do you think this could turn into a profession for you? Like an archeologist or? Paleon, is it called paleon, what are they called? Paleontologist. Paleontologist. I actually have some trilobite fossils right here on my desk. Well, show them. Okay. Here. Can you see the, can you see the trilobite? Uh, yeah. Where'd the you get that? I, I got the, I got that on our way to Vegas. And like on a Vegas trip, I think. But there's more if you look closely. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one I wanted on my desk top, my desk. That is so cool. Um, have you been to other like dinosaur museums in Utah? I've been to I've been to the one in Sandy, I think it is. I don't know what it is. The the one I don't know which one it is. I think there's it's a couple. I think there's a couple more here. Yes. I've been to like two. I think I've been like three because of the Ogden Dino Park. Oh. Where we, where we actually took the pictures. Where we took the pictures too, huh? Well, um, I, I hope you keep, I hope that interest in you keeps growing and growing as you get older because dinosaurs really? are really interesting. They're, you know, they're such interesting creatures and part of our history, huh? They are. Yeah. They are. That's that. They're one of my favorite subjects in science. I love it. Um, I know. What? And I know a bunch of dino names. Can you just rattle off a few for us? Um. Yeah. Uh. Just a few dino names. Yeah. Sure. Just whatever. Dilophosaurus is one of them. And then there's Apatosaurus. Uh, I'm just thinking of the first ones that come to my head. Yeah. T-Rex, of course. I know that one so far. I don't know the other two. Triceratops, the three-horned dino. Stegosaurus, the one with the spikes on its back. Okay. And Kylosaurus with the, like, club on its tail, like the big boulder oh, yeah. Yeah. tail. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Then there's actually two that are not dinosaurs. Pterodactyl and... Mosasaurus. Under wait, wait, wait. Dinosaurs only lived on land. Wait, so a pterodactyl is not considered a dinosaur? No, it's considered a flying reptile that lived at the same time of, as dinos. Wait, but not a dinosaur? Nope, not a dinosaur. Ah, uh, you're blowing my mind right now. I didn't know that. Probably blowing the audience's mind too. How come I didn't know this? Why don't I know this? Um, I don't know. I, I, that's, uh, that, that just shows you how many dino books I read. Yeah. Now, audience, take note. You just learned something probably today. <laughs> yep. Just that's take note. Awesome. Of that. That's uh, awesome. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to try to use that today. Try to wow somebody. All right. They're, they're flying reptiles. That lived at the same time as that, dinosaurs. But they're not. Okay. All right. More yeah, on that. Um, let's jump to our next question here on our list. Yeah. Ready. Uh, <laughs> what's the best way for anyone to ask you about your extraordinary circumstance? Um, I usually don't like being asked, asked that, but I think the best way would be like, why do you have a wheelchair? Or okay. why do you have to use crutches to walk? Yeah. Why don't you like to be asked that? Do you mind me because asking? I sometimes just don't feel comfortable talking about it. Yeah. Is it okay that I asked you that question? 
Yeah, it's all right. I'm fine with that. Anything, anything for an interview? Yeah. Well, you know, what, what might be helpful, right, is some, some of the people watching, they, yeah. they might be interested in how someone like you feels and what you prefer. So it's, it's helpful. So you're yeah. saying sometimes if someone say, like, why are you in a wheelchair? You, yeah, don't, well, to, you like, don't necessarily get mad about that? Um, not really. But, yeah, but, but it depends on how the person says it. How do you mean? Like, why are you in a wheelchair? But I don't prefer that. I prefer, like, why are you in a wheelchair? Mm. Why are you in a wheelchair? So it sounds like to me... Sometimes the tone of how someone asks a question. Yeah, it, feel, it makes me feel bad. Yeah. What, but, about, what about if you got to know them first a little bit more? Would that, yeah, that help? Yeah, that would help. Okay. You're so great. Thanks for sharing that and being open about it. Um, Adrian, why, why should people, you, me, other people, why should we why should we write stories? Cuz it's good for for others to know about people's lives and what they like. Why? Cuz some someone might be curious about like some some famous person like like someone that's super famous like I I want to know something about them. Yeah. So then they write a book then then you get to know a little bit more about them. Right. And even though your book is not about you specifically, it's obviously yeah, it's about, about something, something I love. You love, right. So that gives us an idea of a little bit more about you because it's filled with dinosaurs, which, right, it might connect you with someone who's already likes dinosaurs who maybe didn't know. And now My they best have... friend likes dinosaurs. What? My best friend likes dinosaurs. Do you think that's one of the reasons you guys are best friends? Um, yeah. Could be. Yeah. She also yeah. likes Pokemon too, which I kind of like Pokemon. Uh, one being, you kind of like them, five being super like Pokemon. Where are you? Like 50 50. Okay. They're like two and a half. Okay. Yeah. Um, next question what's what's helped you stay positive during covid um just the thought of me returning to school one day hmm has that been a that's a it's bright a, spot for you huh it's been a thing well returning to elementary yeah how is how is your elementary school do you have a good time there i did, I did. you did yep. what grade will you be in I'm already in junior high. Which is which grade? Six. Sixth grade. Oh my gosh. You're in junior high. Wait, are you right now? Is it sixth grade right now? Yeah, right now. Uh, not last year, but this current, what you're in right this now? Year, this current year. Okay. And what's the situation where, with you, where you're at regarding school? What's, are you, can you tell us like, are you doing partly online? Is it partly I'm doing online? All I'm doing it all online until October. Okay. October switching and back. Then, and then what? That uh, in October I'm switching back. Okay. To, forward to that. Yeah. So I'm starting this year off at, with online. Okay. Yeah. So fingers crossed for October. Things hopefully they go really well, so that you can get back. Especially since it's around Halloween time. What? Especially. Since since it's around Halloween time. I know. I love Halloween. Agreed. Actually, I, I actually made my own Halloween Legos. What do you mean you made your own Halloween Legos? Like, like, Lego characters. Oh, really? Yeah, I made my own, like, a, like a ghost zombie. How big are they? They're, they're like, this big. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not that big, though. Okay. They're like this, that big. Is it, what's, uh, is it, is Halloween like one of your favorite holidays? All Halloween is, yeah, Halloween is. That's so one of my, It's like you, one of my most favorites. Are you going to dress up this year? Of course. Who, what? who wouldn't dress up on Halloween? I think there's some people who don't dress up, you know? Some people. Do you know, do you know what you're going to be? Still haven't decided, but I know I'm going to dress up. Okay. 
I want to know. I want you to send me a picture. Um, let's go to the next, another question. Okay. Tell us about your trooper, meaning? Uh, my bird. Your bird. Tell us about him. Owen Swash it is the name of the bird. Oh, and it, he's a scientist that works at the Natural History Museum. Mm -hmm. And he's been working on a secret something for years, which is a time machine. That way he could go back in time and bring dinosaurs back to life, like can it collect some of their DNA and come back and come back to the present and bring them back to life to make the world a good play a good place. That is great. So it sounds like your character is, um, I mean, if you're going to be a scientist, you'd have to be, you know, yeah, smart. Herman, smart, you'd have to be determined. He's, you'd determined. Have to... He's determined. He's very determined. Does he work late hours? Um, sometimes, yeah, but sometimes when he's had a long, hard day, he just passes out in his lab. Yeah, right. And, uh, how, I mean, and the fact that he's keeping something secret, that must be also mean that he's pretty... Well, he's keeping it secret so nobody knows and tries to stop him until he makes the dinos. And that way everyone, everyone will be surprised. I like that. Sometimes, you know, I like to think, yeah, sometimes it's good to work on something and surprise people. Yeah. I wonder how many people were surprised when they found out you had written a book. I'm pretty sure a ton. Probably, yeah. you know, I bet they were like, what? What? Yeah. Even so some like, people it's a surprise. Yeah. Even some people yeah, uh, elementary were surprised. I'm so excited. Right. Um, we're going to have your book signing when we can get back to be social, huh? When we can yeah, be back. So in, like, then we're going to have a book <laughs> signing. We can invite all these people, huh? Yep. It's just a matter of waiting for yep. that time. Yep. Yep. Um, how would you describe your disease or illness to someone yes. who's never heard about it? Disability. How, disability. disability. How would you describe your disability? What is it? Um, it? I would describe it as a disability where my spine wasn't fully connected. That, yeah, my spine isn't fully connected. So it so my so I'm paralyzed from the knee down. What's the name of this condition? It's spina bifida, also known as the snowflake disorder. Snowflake disorder. I didn't I know. Think, that. Well, yeah, I see. I can't move my legs. Can you yeah. feel them? No, I can't. You can't feel them. Well, I can't. I can only feel them when I touch them. Really. But, well, when something else is touching them, I can't feel them. Okay, what if that, would that be, what if someone was touching your foot, your mom, can you feel that? Um, no. Okay. It helps if I'm ticklish down there, I wouldn't know. <laughs> so say that again about your spine, it's not connected. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not fully connected. Okay. Um, is there, will it connect at some point or is it something? Uh, I think it's going to be like this forever. Is it, uh, yeah, you have to go get, do you still go to the doctor sometimes? Um, no, Not so no. Much. sometimes they're just surgeries, like when I'm sick, Sometimes, but, I've, but I haven't been sick this whole, have, this whole pandemic. Okay, good. That's, that's Lucky. Nice. And I hope I remain that way. Yeah, me too. I mean, nobody wants to go around this time. Am I right? You are right. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that with me and with the audience because um, maybe they learned something new about spinal bifida that they didn't know before. So thank you for yep. being uh, willing to share that, bud. Um, yep. Let's see. Mm. I was going to ask what are you looking forward to, but I know you're looking forward to school and Halloween. Is there anything else you're looking forward to the next few months? Um, basically just all the holidays. And, and this month is my dad's birthday, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. Good. Can you give us a surprise? Do you know like what you're going to do for him? 
I don't, I'm not in, I'm, I don't know what we're going to do. Okay. Well, I, uh, I'm sure it's going to be great. What is your favorite cereal? My favorite cereal? Well, that's a hard question. <laughs> I have too many favorites. Well, Perfect. Okay, not one of them. Top three then. Just your top three. Top three. Maybe. Top or three. So Cocoa Puffs and one Captain Crunch and Fruit Loops. Well, <laughs> not Fruit Loops, like Cocoa Krispies. Have you done all of them at one time in one bowl? No, that'd be too much sugar. <laughs> Way too much sugar. That was all the same. Like if you just did a little portion of this, a little portion of that, a little portion of this. Yeah, then the milk would be a bunch of colors. <laughs> I, want to, I want you to do it and then maybe show me a picture. Do you think you would do that ever? Come My on. mom wouldn't like that. Come on. Well, just, just once. Just one bowl. Just My to mom see. totally won't let me. <laughs> won't okay. let me. Well, I'm still going to think that maybe it will someday. What's your favorite treat or dinner or breakfast? Dinner, I'm going to name my favorite breakfast, dinner, and treat. Great. So my favorite breakfast is runny eggs. And like, yeah, like runny eggs, potatoes, usual. My favorite dinner, mac and cheese. I had that last night. And my favorite treat is M and M's. Just plain. M and M's. M and M plain or chocolate or peanut butter. Any kind. Any, any kind. kind. Except mint. No mints. <laughs> Are those the green ones? Yeah, I'm not a fan of the mint flavored. Yeah. I'm not a fan of mint at all. Yeah. It's a hard. So thing. I don't eat like sugar canes. Don't eat like candy canes. None of those. Get it. I get it. Um, yep. Is your mac and cheese from a box or homemade? Does it matter? Uh, homemade. <gasps> homemade. Oh, you have home. That's My mom makes the best mac and cheese. Is, do you like it when it's gooey or is when it's a little hard, crusty on the sides? I like it when it's like, goo like gooey. Because oh. it tastes better when it's gooey. Do you eat like a whole plate? Um, yeah, well, not, not a full plate. Just, I sometimes have broccoli with it. Do you like it? Yeah, what other sides do you like with your mac and cheese besides broccoli? I like, I like, well, broccoli's one of them, and then sometimes wet, sometimes mandarin, wet oranges. Yeah, you know, just the fruit, vegetable stuff. Got it. But mostly you just like to just eat. Do you like it warm, cold, hot? Um, I like it warm, not not cold. Will you eat some today, or did it all get gobbled up? I, I, um, I think it all got gobbled up yesterday when we went to the outside movie in my grandma's backyard. You went to an outside. What movie did you see outside? In grand in my grandma's backyard, we saw Finding Nemo. But uh -huh. but before that, we watched a video of our trip to Yellowstone. Hmm. How was it last night? It was fun. Uh, looking at the memories of Yellowstone was fun too. It's a beautiful place, isn't it? Yeah. And we saw stink, stinky old faithful. It stinks. <laughs> and it did stink. Like smell wise. Yeah. What it, was it big? It was big, but there was a geyser that uh, that went off way better than old faithful. Oh. I don't remember what the geyser was called, but it went off like way higher than Old Faithful. That's a but great I'm glad, I, I'm glad I wore my mask there because it kind of blocked the smell of the geysers. Because <laughs> they smell like rotten eggs. Constantly. Yeah. yeah. This sounds like you've had a really nice summer with a couple of really good trips. Yeah. That's great, man. But unfortunately, no Disneyland this year. In, uh, Unless COVID cl clears up, I think. Right. Well, I hope it clears up soon. We do, I do too. Well, we can, but you know what? I think we'll get there. Eventually, we'll get there, and Disneyland will hopefully still be there, and we can all go do those things. 
Yeah. Right. And then we can have your book signing. Yes. With that, why don't we read your book? Not we. Why don't you read your book? Yay! So, All right. you what? Ready. Oh, oh, hold on. So this is what I want you to do. I want you each time you read it, then I want you to do this. Or oh, so I can see the pictures. Or I don't know. I could even be holding it up while you read. I don't know. What do you want to do? Or I think you I want read to it and then just do this. Yeah, yeah. Because I I can't actually like see the words. They look upside down. Right. I can actually see them. They're normal for me. For everyone who's going to see it. So why don't you read it and then you'll hold up. After you've read both pages, hold it up for a minute so people can see it. Hold it for a good few seconds and then lay it down. Okay? okay. And I'm just so, going to be quiet till the very end. Okay, let's start with this page. Your passions are teeth, your plans are mapped out. The way you chase life leaves no room for death. The dino hunt. And this is every and this is everyone that helped donate money for my book. Yeah, thanks all you people who are watching. Yeah, those are your book believing backers, huh? Thank you. Yep. To my rowdy brother Peyton. Peyton, where's Peyton? Is he out there? Don't get him in here. <laughs> yeah, he's downstairs. I bet. Well, that's really cool that you dedicated to your brother. On a note for the audience. You probably want to stay away from him when he eats sugar. He's crazy. <laughs> yeah, just enough for the audience. Okay. Right. So this is the first picture. You can see a T-Rex's mouth. All right. Owen Swash dreamed about re-engineering wait, wait, real quick, real quick. You're such a fast reader and your mind goes so quickly. Take it just a little slower and speak okay. up a little more because it's it's a little hard for me to hear you just a little uh, bit. So talk okay. slower and a little more loudly. Okay. Owen Swash dreamed about re-engineering dinosaurs nearly every second of every day. While he worked as a paleontologist at the Rockable Natural History Museum, he believed dinosaurs, if brought back to life, could be excellent, excellent contributors to an avian society. If only I could pr procure DNA from a living dino. Scoot back a little bit. Nice. You see it perfect? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Owen hardly did anything outside of dinos, so his friends usually ended up hanging out with him in his secret lab, tucked away in the basement of the museum where he had been working on a top secret something for years. One night, Owen told his friends what his long hours in the dark had produced. I finally created a time portal demo of prime dino DNA. Come on the first expedition with me. That's the portal. Elsewhere for examining and doubting his genius invention, Baron accidentally turned it on. Before they could do anything, the portal lurched and struck them right into... Oops. The Triassic period. Are we ancient now? Did we shrink too? Are we technically lost if we know when we are? It worked, Owen exclaimed. Now let's find some dino DNA. He sprang into action, happier than he had ever been, and immediately found some tracks to follow. Okay, hold that still for a second. All right. Ooh, there's something in the background, huh? It's a dino. I hold it up again so the audience. Yeah, let him just kind of take a second. Ah, see, I see it, yeah. Yep. The tracks led them to a watering hole where they saw two living dinos. 
Owen recognized them immediately and without any hesita hesitation introduced himself and his pals. The dinosaurs were surprisingly kind and colorful, all thanks to me. Okay, all now hold back just a little bit. Now just, wait, everyone, these are Adrian's illustrations that we brought in as characters and as part of the book artwork. We love them. Yep, and I drew them. You did. And I know their names. I don't know the actual dino names. All right. They told the Jolly Troop all about the way they lived, the foods they ate, and the cold weather they were having, and about every dino's worst nightmare this side of the Jurassic period. Dreadosaurus Rex. Dreadosaurus Rex, the body. They spent the rest of the afternoon exploring the prehistoric forest and becoming friends. When no one felt comfortable enough, he asked them about their DNA. Psst, when's the best time to ask someone for their DNA? Is there a thing as a best time? The, the dinosaurs didn't know what DNA was, so Owen changed the question. Will each of you give me a scale to take home? I want to use them to make a world full of friendly dinos. It, it looks like it looks like a giant plant, but it's a flower. Close up. Yeah. Suddenly, something came crashing toward them from deep within the forest. It was Dread Dreadfred's prehistoric ancestor, Dreadosaurus Rex. No. We've got to get you back to the portal, the dinos cried. Hop on our backs and hold on tight. Or Dreadosaurus Rex is going to have us all, all for dinner. Ooh. Hold still for a second. Ooh, he looks so scary. Yeah, and he has X's on his eyes. X's on his eyes and big sharp teeth. Get big sharp teeth. And it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a T-Rex, too, of course. The friends ducked and dodged, swung and and slid through vines, pools, branches, and brambles. The chase was hard, but being gobbled up by the likes of Dreadosaurus Rex would be much harder to swallow. <laughs> okay, lean back a little bit. So he's chasing your dinosaurs. I love that. Yeah. And they're just little. Owen's so tiny, huh? They're just little. Oh, I didn't even see them. I didn't even see them on the dinos before. <laughs> Here's the portal, cried Owen, and just before they hopped through, the dinos tossed Owen their scales. Use these to make better, stronger, kinder dinos, and then bring them back to help us make our world better. Now go! We'll fight off Dreadosaurus Rex. Then you can see the epic battle. The epic battle. And the dinos, of course, go in. The, and of course, Owen and the others come back in the portal. Because why wouldn't they? <laughs> They made it back safely, and soon Owen was successful in engineering the first and friendliest dinos in modern history. When the time came, he called he called Baron and Algernon and Matt Magnus. It's time to make our it's time to take our new friends back to small friends to make a better dino world. The portal glowed go, and the friends led the led the new dinos into a brave old world. The end. And there's one, well, there's one more page. About. Okay. So real quickly to our audience, audience, with all of our storytellers, when they get to the end of the book, we have beyond their biography, we have a place where they get two lessons to, live, to leave with us that they hope after you read the book, kind of like a life lesson that they hope everyone will remember. So Adrian, can you tell us your two life lessons? And that first tell us number one, and then number two, okay. and then I'll ask you about them. Go ahead. Okay. Don't leave anyone behind. And lesson two, adventure is out there without limits. Those are fantastic lessons. I want to ask you real quickly about them. Why do you, okay. why is it important? Or why did you decide on lesson one, don't leave anyone behind? Well, because I don't think, because it's important to not leave anyone behind because it would be really rude and it, and someone might get hurt with the dinos. Yeah. Because if they're left, 
everyone, because if they left everyone behind, but like they left the dinos, but they brought uh, more dinos back to make the world better. Right. They didn't leave the dinos behind. Right. And it's a good lesson for us today, huh? Even just in our lives, to not leave yeah. anyone behind, huh? So <laughs> as the author of this book, I suggest always bring these, bring these lessons into your lives. Yes, I agree. On um, another one of the pages, can you show them the advocacy page right next to yours? Oh. Uh, um, just, I just hold it up real quick. Yep. So just to tell the audience, this is this page is written by our friends at Patient Worthy, and it's a 25, 250 word, you're good, bud, 250 word um, description of what spinal bifida is. So we hope we get to teach people a little bit about it, don't we, Adrian, in your book as well? Okay. Great. Okay, can I read about that? Hmm. Am I going to read about that? Nope, that's okay. That's all right. That was super. And the last thing I want you to know and just tell us a little about what was it like working with your team and how can you tell me about them real quickly? It was fun working with the team. Like telling them all my ideas. Yeah, Tamara and Michael, right? Yeah, they were fun. Right. What did you remember about working with them? Why was it what was uh unique about it? What what was unique was uh, was talking about my ideas and going places to take the pictures and just writing the book in general. Yeah, they really liked working with you. I know because we had lots of meetings and they really enjoyed everything about it. And I know they're gonna be excited when we have our book signing. Is there I'm anything, gonna, what? I'm gonna be excited. <laughs> Is there anything else you wanna leave with the audience before we tune off, bud? Okay. Um, no, I don't think there's anything. Okay, well, I think you did a fabulous job today. I knew you, would go, you were going to. It's been so fun getting to know you a little better, right? Just beyond the book, just a little bit more of what you think and how you tick and the things you like. And also, I, I loved learning about some new things I never knew <laughs> and yeah. also how you see the world. I think you're a really special person, and I feel super lucky that Red Fred Project got to work with you. So I'm, I'm so glad that you're one of our storytellers. I think you're a great example to everyone around you. And I think, I think what? I think I am too. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. Well, we think you're awesome. We love you, buddy. We'll be in touch. Um, and let's just wave and say goodbye to everybody. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.